All right, what's good? We're going to talk about the biggest mistake that I've made in 2021 so far. To be honest, 2021 has actually been pretty positive overall between my two portfolios. I'm definitely much further up than I anticipated being. And so overall, it's been a great picture. However, there has been slight errors of judgment um, that I've personally made in my portfolio. So I wanted to touch on it today. Hopefully it might help one of you guys out there not making the same mistake that I seem to make quite often, to be honest. And so the reason why I'm making these videos is sometimes it actually helps me go back and relook at some of the mistakes that I've made so that I don't actually go and make them again. And so there's uh, certain other things in my behavioral ways of investing that I've managed to trim out. But I think this is something that I haven't been able to crack just yet but I will find a way to crack it. And so we're going to talk about it today. We're going to touch on it. I'm going to share, you, share my thoughts, my opinions, my feelings, why I made the decisions I made, why they're obviously mistakes and what I've learned from it and obviously what I'm going to do differently next time as well. So this is going to be an important video for me, definitely, but hopefully one of you guys out there might find some value in it. Anyway, on your screen, you can see Virgin Galactic and this is half of the mistake. This is 50% of the mistake that I made. And around the 11th of January, I sold this stock. It was around $25 that I sold it. And I thought there was some justifications to selling it. So just to put it into context, this stock is in my ISA. And my ISA is obviously my tax-free investment account. And for those of you that don't know, I maximized my ISA allowance um, probably around October last year, 2020. So from October 2020, there's no more new money I can add to my ISA. Hence the reason why I'm doing a lot more trades and doing a lot more activity in my trading 212 because I have to wait until April before I can re-up and add more money into that ISA. So because of that, what tends to happen then is if there are opportunities that I do feel like, you know what, I want this for the long term and I definitely want to be protected from a tax standpoint and I want this to hold this for long term or whatnot, then I want it in my ISA. So what that means is because I can't add any more money, I have to sell something. So I have to sell something to make room for something new. And it's all about opportunity cost at that stage. I have to work out where is the biggest opportunity that I can potentially take advantage of and which is the least biggest opportunity that I currently hold, which I can obviously let go. And so this situation, I let go of Virgin Galactic. And there was a few catalysts that helped me make that decision. They had a space flight test, which didn't go so well. And then the share price started to sort of go flat. I think if I if I show you the six month graph, you can actually see that um, it started to dip um, before, like from where it was in December to where it sort of was in January. So you can see at that time being, you saw it just kind of going on a downhill trajectory. So that was kind of one of the reasons. The other reason is that the chairman, Chamath Paliapatiya, he went and sold a bunch of shares. Now he explicitly mentioned that he sold those shares in order to fund um, new ventures that he's working on. But a part of me was feeling like, hmm, is that really accurate? Because you've got a lot of money, dude, like you can fund those new ventures. So and the shares that you sold, the amount it was, like although it was a lot to the, to us, in in essence to your portfolio, I don't think it's that consequential. So I thought that maybe he knew something that we didn't know, and actually, you know, there was something there, and I kind of misread into that a little bit. And then there was a lot of talk. So what I then do is go and read a lot of articles and see what the experts are saying about things. And because of the whole Divock ninety one situation and this kind of growing again. Um, and it not sort of seeing no end in sight, there was kind of murmurs that, you know what, they're not going to be able to do successful space flights um, at this point in the year. So it's going to be something that might happen later on in the year. So I thought, you know what, that's three solid reasons. And for those of you day one people that have been following this channel for a long time, you, you know that I've always said, like, try and have three reasons that you buy a stock. Um, and I think the same goes for selling a stock. Try and have at least three reasons as to why you're selling because you know one reason may not be strong enough and so if you have a couple of more reasons to fall back on it can kind of justify the whole kind of approach anyway those were kind of my three reasons and I thought yeah it was the right thing to do the fourth reason was obviously my ISA was maxed out and so I wanted to get into lemonade and lemonade is the second part of the mistake that I made because all I saw was lemonade basically skyrocketing. Now, if you go on my Instagram, you will see that around August, around this time, I did a post on lemonade, basically telling people that, 
you know what, Lemonade is a good company to hold. Um, I feel like it's definitely a good company for the long term. And I wasn't pl willing to buy it at this stage because I just felt like I wanted to see another earnings update. Um, which would have been around this period here. So you can see that the share price even went further down. And so I thought, you know what, well, I can wait a little bit. Maybe because because of my whole ISA situation as well, I'm trying to weigh all of this up. Maybe I can wait for another earnings update. And then obviously from that point, use that as the entry point to get in. So there was a method to the madness, but all I saw was Lemonade just continue to rise, continue to rise, continue to rise to the point where I was just like, what is going on? I need to buy Lemonade. And I bought it again, obviously on the 11th, of January and you can literally see from this graph I bought Lemonade the day that obviously I sold Virgin Galactic I bought Lemonade at the exact peak and then it started dropping there's a running joke in the board that when I buy stocks they fall and when I sell stocks they rise and actually it's not even a joke it's actually true like I feel like my money's dirty because every time I buy a stock it drops and every time I sell a stock it just decides to rise literally I sold Virgin Galactic here and since then, you know, once it got rid of my dirty money, it just started to just, you know, just do leaps and bounds. And obviously that is 100% of a return that I missed. And I was already like in 20% profit at the time I sold. So, you know, we're probably talking like maybe 100 and some odd percent, like 120, maybe 130%. I didn't do the maths exactly. I don't want to hurt myself even more. But 100 and certain percent that I basically missed out on by selling the stock, which would have been in my ISA. And then not only that, with Lemonade, I'm actually losing the money. So not only did I miss out on that money, but I'm obviously losing money now because I bought Lemonade at literally the exact peak. So this has been peak, you know, for no better word, for no pun intended, has been a little peak in terms of how I do things. And it's actually one of the reasons, incidentally, that I'm going to touch on why I don't do weekly portfolio updates. I think one of the reasons, there's many reasons why I don't really do weekly portfolio updates anymore. Obviously, one of the reasons is the fact that I'm not doing that much activity within my portfolio um, for there to be kind of meaningful content. But one of the other reasons is that I think it actually makes me a better investor to not look at my portfolio week in, week out. I think if I look at my portfolio week in, week out, my natural human tendencies will start to take over and I will start to look at things and be like, hmm, hmm, should I do this? Should I do that? And then potentially make some rash decisions. And you know what? A long-term portfolio should be exactly that long-term. Just leave it, look at it when you need to look at it, look at it when you're buying something, look at it when maybe you want to sell something that's been a catalyst or a big change in your port in, in, a, in a business that you're invested in. Other than that, just, just let it go and leave it. And I feel much more at peace that I don't even check my free trade portfolio anymore, except when I want to buy a new position, which I've done kind of recently, which I've had to sell another position to do that. But other than that, I don't really look at it. And I think that's that's kind of helped me with my mentality going forward in terms of how I'm going to address some of these long-term plays. So looking at Virgin Galactic, the question then I ask myself is actually, is it too late to get back into Virgin Galactic? And this is a second mistake that, you know what, I've just don't know whether or not I'm going to make it again because now it's I've lost that money, I've down on that money and now do I go back into the stock? And so my answer at the moment is no, I'm not looking to get back into this business. I genuinely feel like it is a great opportunity. It's on the higher risk side, but I do feel there are catalysts towards it. And there's a lot of catalysts in, in the space um, arena at the moment. Um, you know, I think ARK is creating a space fund and there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in the space in the space in the space space effectively so you know it's a good look for space right now do you know what I mean but for me personally I'm just gonna have to take this L and move on you feel me because otherwise what's gonna happen I'm gonna buy it now it's gonna drop and then I'm gonna make the same mistake so yeah the, the lesson here is one FOMO if you see a stock rallying up that you like you know what wait for the pullback wait for the dip it is inevitable unless you're you're like me that you have to put your money in in order for it to dip just wait for it because a dip is always inevitable and you know what it's always better to buy low and sell and, and sell high that's the aim of the game and if you are in a stock that you do believe in which I never def, def, never did not believe in Virgin Galactic it was just that could I make a bit more money before April as I mentioned earlier in this video then just don't fiddle with it man just stop fiddling with your stocks too many of you out there just fiddling i'm a fiddler but i don't fiddle with it no more do you know what i mean i used to fiddle in it but stop fiddling with your stocks just leave them alone buy your stocks just let them chill 
and just let them generate wealth for you in the future, which is the whole purpose of the long-term investing. And now the reason why I confidently have my two brokers and, and I like the separation because a lot of you ask me, oh, you know, would you move your free trade ISA to trade in 212 to save three pounds? Listen, I'm not trying to save three pounds a month because if I have to look at my ISA every day, then I'm going to make silly mistakes again. I'd rather keep my long-term investments with free trade, my shorter term plays with trading 212, and it helps keep that mental separation that if the background's blue, then obviously I can do what I want to do. Do you know what I mean? But if the background if the background's pink, then I need to think. And I just made it up on the fly. Do you know what I mean? I should I should I should I should be MC. But listen, anyway, that's the mistake that I've made. Listen, put your mistakes in the comments. I know some of you out there are going to sit on your high horse acting like you don't make mistakes. You do make mistakes. So put your mistakes in the comments as well. Let everyone learn from them too. But listen, I'm not going to buy Virgin Galactic. I'm going to have to just let this one go. Um, it's Anyone that actually followed the recommendation, because I posted about this on my Instagram as well. Um, anyone that followed the recommendation is up. Well done to you. Honestly, this is a fantastic business. Um, I think it's got so much prospects. I genuinely like Virgin Businesses anyway. Um, I find their, their corporate governance is quite well run and the way they, they manage capital is quite good. So, you know, I genuinely feel that actually, you, although there's risk to it, there's a lot of parts of the business that actually make it quite safe. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this is definitely going to go to 60 to 70 and, you know, eventually at some stage to 100. Um, but who knows if it does crash to maybe like 30 or 40, I might get back into it then. But if it stays around these levels, I, I think I'm just going to take the L and, and accept that I've basically missed out on it. So yeah, that's the video for today. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did like comment, subscribe, pre-market, I'm out.